everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, I'm sure you'll all be happy to hear, it was a beautiful day. Let me show you how beautiful. We'll put that in right now. Look at all this amazing sunshine. Hello, Jake. How are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? I see you. You've been sitting out here. Oh, I'm out here with just my just my shirt sleeves. Look at this. Whoa. And the birds are making noise. It's beautiful. I had to chase a dog away today this morning. Some strange dog was in the yard. And um, we'll take a walk. Oh, uh, Mama's over here. Oh, I should have put my boots on. It's probably squishy up this way. Um, but anyways, I had to chase a dog out of the yard. I don't know where the dog was from because I don't know if it was eyeballing my chickens, but they were all out. And then the the um, rooster crowed and they all went back to where they belong. There's Mama. Mama Dorothy. We'll walk out here a little ways. I hear a mower up above. The neighbor must be mowing. Everybody needs to catch up on their work when it's dry enough. Let's see if we can go through here. I don't know. It's, oh, it's squishy. I don't want my shoes to get all wet. This morning when I ran out, my I had my other shoes on, and there's a hole in the toe, and my sock got wet. Well, hello there, Mama. There's, that's Dorothy. Hey, Dorothy, where's your babies? I hear them all underneath the pine. Where are they? You call them. Whoa. Okay, where are you, little ones? I hear them scratching over there. Your mama's calling you. She's telling you there's a big bad lady up here. You better go see. Let's see, where are you? There they go. Run, run, run. Uh, let's see if I can get them. Wow, look at that. Look at how pretty the, the pines are starting to look. Everything's blooming. It's spring is coming. There she goes. There you are with your babies. You babies stay in there. Oh, it's cold. It's in this, I'm in the shade now. It's too cold for me. Ooh, in the shade. There's a little bit of breeze. Okay, walk them up there. Keep them going into the sunshine. I gotta go in the sunshine. I don't like being in the shade. Oh, there, that feels so much better. Wow, what a beautiful day. We've been waiting for this weather. You know, every time somebody tells me they have good weather in their area, we usually get it in a few days. And then when they say they're gonna have storms, we usually get them in a few days. So um, a few of you are talking that you're gonna be getting storm in a few days. Well, we'll probably get the storms. I hope not. Well, I don't want my shadow in the thing. There's the bar thing that he said he made to drape over the garden that I didn't know he made. We don't have anything planted yet. I could put some seeds in probably. I've got some, those look like they're They're growing by themselves. Mustard greens is what they look like. And this is wild mustard greens. Those are the sweet because it's got the rounded, the rounded leaves. If it had the pulling tea leaves, it would be the um, bitter. Oh, look at the little, the little um, currant bush. Actually, has some fruit growing off of it. Yeah, pretty good. Thank you, little fruit. I wonder if they'll ripen. There's three of them, four of them. And they all have a little bit of fruit on them. And these bushes are doing really good. He planted these probably three years ago. Or two years ago, maybe. I don't know. A while ago. And he's going to transplant these around. There's a huge bush. I have a huge one in the yard. We'll go through the chicken and I'll show you the big one. And the chickens have all gone in. They must be thinking that that big bad lady's around. So we'll go in. 
Actually, at this time of the day, they go in. I don't know if it's because of this heat, the time of the day. Open this gate. Yeah, we went through the gates. We'll go over here and I'll show you the bush that I'm talking about. Those little bushes will become this big bush. This had life at one time and it was dying and we had to spray it with something because it was a mite that would would grow off of it and it was really hard to, to keep alive. But it's a variegated, it's got the variegated leaves and then it's got the green leaves. They said there's something that's, I don't know what the variegated is, that's the weaker of them, but it seems to be taken over. I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just guessing. And then I was out here earlier this week and my early rhododendron, the, the miniature one, is blooming over here. I'll show you. I actually have some flowers to show you. Look at, aren't they beautiful? Look at this. Whoa! We have, we have some color in our yard. They're really pretty. These will bloom later. This is the large rhododendron. These were plants that I got at McDonald's. Um, these pods right here, those are the pods that will um, bloom. Yep. Well, we walked around the whole house. I guess we can go back in. I, or wait, maybe I'll show you the other current bush. This is the, this is the big current bush. It's getting stragglier and stragglier, but it's got some berries. Let's hope that the berries are good this year. Hope they're big and plump. Got some dead wood to cut off of it, which we will do. And I used to have a gooseberry bush here, but my mother was afraid her car would get scratched. So what does Jim do? He puts this bush there. This one's got actually thorns on it too. The gooseberries have thorns also. And then my flowers will start to come up. There's nothing much showing, just that one plant. That's a, a lily. And the others are trying to come up. They're starting. Won't be long and this will be full of beautiful plants. Well, did you enjoy the little walk around my yard? I don't remember exactly what I said because it was done this morning when it was really really sunny and it's still it's still nice outside in fact I just chased I actually moved the fence I'll start back a little ways I moved the fence around the the, the pine tree because it seems like brownie wants to go under there all the time and this morning I found Dorothy and her babies under there so it must be Dorothy flew over the the fence too but then she couldn't figure out how to get back in but her babies came back in and so I thought, you know, maybe I will just move the fence to go around the tree. So that's what I did. And they were all staying in and doing really, really good. Silver Fox and her babies were all staying in. Brownie was staying in. Wow. That lasted up until maybe an hour ago. I had to chase Brownie. And Brownie is smart. You know, these chickens have a lot more going on in their little heads than we realize. Um, Brownie would let me walk behind her she'd keep a fair distance I'd keep a fair distance from her as she walks but the closer she got to the door where it's open and she knew exactly what I was going to do she would turn around and run to go the opposite direction so then I would turn around and go the opposite direction she'd just about get to the door again and she'd take off and run and this last and so then I would try again and so what I did is I started running have you run have you done any jogging lately I did some jogging today I ran as fast as I could it was more than a jog it was a real run and when I I must have startled her enough to where she took off into the air and flew over to the fence back under the pine tree exactly where I wanted her to be so she was there then a little later I hear this little um, peeping sound and I'm thinking what in the world? Silver Fox, you and your babies are out again? 
you had all that space and you decided you needed to go further. They wanted to go under the bush that I showed you. And that's where they like to go. They like to go over by the wishing well in that bush. Actually, and they were all the way in the front. Front, front yard. Well, oh, maybe yeah. they wanted to see the rhododendron that I showed Probably. them. I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're venturing further and further. Well, then they came marching back. And um, I opened the door. And they understand when I open the door. They hear the clink clink of the metal. And they just walk in. It's like a little follow the leader kind of thing. Following the leader, the leader, the leader. Yep, following the leader wherever she may go. And that's where the, the little chicks go. They follow the mama and the mama leads in. And you know what? I was I was reading about chickens because they're, they're, they're really very interesting. I was reading about, you know, because silver fox... The rooster really likes silver fox. And apparently, usually, well, not apparently, but in usually, but most likely, most of the time. I don't know where to put this. But anyways, when hens have their chicks, it's usually eight weeks before they start laying eggs again. Well, silver fox started laying her eggs at five weeks, which means now she's an interest again to the rooster because he likes to make sure that his little babies are in those eggs with her eggs you know we're going to get a <laughs> i guess a uh a, a little bit of a education, <laughs> education. <laughs> about rooster and hen care well the roosters they fancy girls fancy hens and they don't always go according to whether they're the top hen or the middle hen or the lowest hen well um, Silver Fox is the lowest on the, the pecking order. She's the lowest right now. And um, maybe Dorothy's low too. I don't know exactly. I haven't seen whether Silver Fox has pecked Dorothy because Dorothy, she's protecting her babies right now. So she'll peck at other um, hens that are higher up than her. Well, Silver Fox is at the bottom of the barrel. And every time the rooster wants to mate with Silver Fox, brown this lighter brown, not brownie. Brownie is the one that flies out. There's another one that's lighter brown. She will follow the rooster everywhere the rooster goes. And when Silver Fox is fancied by the rooster, who comes running over but that lighter brown and she starts pecking on her. It's like she says, how dare you find this girl attractive? I'm the one that's been sticking with you and walking with you all the time and you don't even fancy me and he doesn't fancy her so and and also i i was reading about when there's more than one rooster there'll be a top rooster and there'll be a lesser rooster a lot of times roosters don't crow if there's two roosters because once you crow now your um the top rooster was going to attack you because he says nobody's gonna it's like a um, I don't know. It's like the bully in the in the playground. If he's top bully, you better not be a bully because you're going to be bullied by me. And so the rooster that doesn't crow has to has to find his girlfriends with in in the sneak. He's sly, and so he attracts them without making all the pecking noise or the sounds that the rooster makes to attract a girl to come over to check out what he found. He does it very silently. And um, should a rooster that's on the lower um, spectrum, where they're, where they're considered second-rate rooster and the top-rate rooster, say, say, I like the second-rate rooster, but then I like the top-rate rooster. And so even though I've been fertilized by that second-rate rooster, I can dump 80% of his sperm because I want to make sure all my babies that are hatched are the top rooster's babies. Now, isn't that interesting that they can do that? They actually know and can distinguish, whereas we, we can't as humans. But um, that was something that I found very interesting. There's a lot more about the chicken world that a lot of us don't know. And learning their talk and learning how they, their ways, like right now, um, 
Emma was off the nest, and I looked in and I saw Dorothy sitting on her eggs with all her babies. And I'm thinking, what in the world? Where's where's Emma? Well, Emma was out walking with the rest of the hens, getting some bugs, and she was eating and she was drinking and she was doing all that stuff that she has to do because usually they only get off the nest once or twice when they're when they're broody, and she per was day. doing that per day, yeah. And she had her wings kind of drooped, dropped. She was really puffing herself up like really big so that she would discourage anybody to bother her. She looks really huge with our feathers all puffed up and her, and her wings um, on the side where she had the wings kind of spread and dropped. And she was flapping her wings a fair amount. And I wondered if she was going to go back on her nest or if she was going to choose a different nest to sit in like she has been. I forgot to try to block um, Dorothy from getting in her nesting box. She was already there, so I, I will just let it be. And as long as the eggs are kept warm, they're good. And she's got about 10 more days before those baby chicks should hatch. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that they hatch. That means more chickies. And I'm hoping that Dorothy's got all girls. Please, no more roosters. I've got one rooster that's silver fox. I can tell it's a rooster. So she's got Rosie, which is a nice little black one. And then she's got the one that I thought was going to be a girl. It's really An Andrew, Andy. I'll call him Andy. I like Andy Betty better. Because it was supposed to be Annie, and now it's Andy. So, and there's a boy in there. So he won't be lasting too long. I'll keep him until he's big enough for the, for the, um, for the freezer camp. <laughs> I don't think. What camp's he going to? Freezer camp. I'll keep him till he's big enough for freezer camp. Then I'll call my brother, and he will either come and get him, or my nephew will come and get him. Somebody will come and get him, but and then he'll go to a new camp. He won't stay in my camp. <laughs> so that's it. I hope you had a great day. I had a wonderful day. And I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye.